Hey there, and welcome back to another video of Space Flight this week. And in this video, we will be reviewing the launches what happened this week, and also some of the things that might happen next week. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started with this week's Starship update. After Booster 7 made its way back to the launch site, it was placed on the launch mount. And on Monday morning at 9 a.m., the entire pad needed to be cleared in 30 minutes. And for all non-essential personnel to locate the site, it, it wasn't until 3 p.m. that the pad was finally cleared through and just an hour later the liquid nitrogen load had begun with the oxygen tank beginning to frost over but which basically means they had a cryo test by 6 p.m both tanks were fully iced up which was a great sign that the test had proceeded well soon after the vehicle detanked and the road was reopened well, I'll just say that wasn't the end of the action in Starbase. On Wednesday, the launch pad was cleared once again, and Booster 7 completed a second full cryo test for the week, which seemed to, to be successful. On Thursday, the LR11000 crane was hooked backed up to Booster 7 and it was removed from the orbital launch mount and placed into the transport stand early Friday morning. Over on the production facility, Ship 24's tank section was moved into the high bay last weekend for a final for a final stacking with Finn the, no, the nose cone section. That tech that tank section was lifted up and onto the turntable and soon after the nose cone was hooked up and lifted onto the tank section. By Tuesday evening, Ship 24 was now fully stacked in the high bay. This is the ship which will be Using that PEZ dispenser payload door that will shoot out several Starlink version 2 satellites. This summer, on the maybe the first Starship over the flight test. On Tuesday morning, Starship 16 was on a move, being rolled out of the Rocky Garden onto Highway 4 and into the brand new Mega Bay, High Bay 2. Being the first vehicle to go inside and be hooked up for lifting. After being lifted with the mech bay crane, the noise, the nose cone of the ship has been separated from the rest of the vehicle. And this is the last update. On and then on Wednesday morning, just before Booster 7's second cryo test. Ship 20 began rolling along Highway 4 at around 10 a.m. Back to the production site, it rolled after spending around 9 months at the launch site. After arriving to the production site, and turned into the rocket car. Now let's move on to launches that happened this week and, and then after that, launches that happened after that, after this week. Don't you just love those Chinese pictures? They're just so... It's amazing. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and they have called for ignition. This rock is amazing. And we have ignition in it and liftoff. Liftoff of the Taiznao 4. That rocket just, it looks like a ball of flames. Yeah, like, look at this, look at this. It looks like a ball, it looks like, it's, yeah, it looks like the sun, both engines. <laughs> well, the sun basically already have engines. <laughs> and the, those, those booster 
scholarships to break any second now when they have. But the soul use. Okay. One I think that's one minute. The 187 seconds is the wait. And sec and first stage separation and that's all to the second stage. Soon we'll have very separation as you can see the spacecraft and the dungeons. And there we have it. Also, just for clarification, it's just a long March 7. It launched on Monday, May 9th. And there we have it. Good job, China! Long way. So, I think that was... Yeah, that was payload separation. And in a few days, it will it will dock to the International Space, not the International Space Station. I, I forgot it's big. You're going to its own space station, and you can see the um, the solar rays have deployed, and now they're pointing towards the sun. But now let's move on to the next one. Hey, hey, all! Since I don't want to like like keep recording every single launch and putting it on here because it's almost midnight, uh, let me clarify each launch and what happened. Well, after the Long March Seven launch, we had iSpace launch its Hyperbola One from China. Honestly, it just says the payload was very uncertain. Uncertain, and but the launch was a failure. Um, they had three failed missions so far. Their first mission was their only successful mission, but whole high hopes for iSpace. And after that, we had Falcon 9 launch a group of Starlink satellites for the 13. Um, it launched on Friday, May 13th at 6.07 p.m. EDT from Vandenberg Space Force Space in California. Um, it successfully launched and landed on, of course, I Still Love You. And, well, one day after that, which is Saturday, um, they launched another batch of Starlink satellites. Um, it, but this time it landed on just read the instructions. And it was Starlink Group 15. It launched on Saturday, May 14, 2022, at 4.40 p.m. EDT from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, USA. Now let's move on to the launch that will happen next week! Okay, and welcome to the last segment of Space Flight this week. It is what will happen next week. Well, on Wednesday, May 18th at 6.40 a.m. EDT, we will have... SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 for a Starlink batch. Group 4 to 18 will be launching from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida at LC-39A. And the biggest thing of this week is Starliner. Starliner will be launching on Thursday, May 19th at 6.54 p.m. EDT. This is the most hyped launch as last year when they attempted to launch, we had some valve issues. It will be launching from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, USA. And the last launch that will happen this week is Blue Origin, New Shepard NS-21. It will launch from and on Friday, May 20th, 2020 at 9.30 a.m. EDT. It will be launching in West Texas in the USA from launch site one. 
it will be suborbital and it will carry a group of humans. Now, thank you for watching this week, this week's segment of Space Flight This Week, and stay on for next week. Thank you for watching. See you later.